Amen. Power. Hold it tight. Life won't be right. Let it loose and it won't abuse. Power can be like a bad habit. If you hold on tight to it, your life will never be right. But if you let it loose, then it won't abuse your life. Hmm. Today, we're talking about the positivity of power, the problem with power, and the position of power. Lokalani, give us the intro. Hello and welcome to Amen Podcast, where we preach the good news of Jesus Christ and how it applies to everyday life. I'm Lokalani, your host, and today Alex is talking about power. Last week, we talked about living by faith and not facts, and here are some of your responses. Michael said, I think that when I'm faced with adversity, I look toward what the world says, but instead of that, I should know that the Lord is only measuring my faith, so I ought to turn to Christ first. Love that. That's so good. J. Alexi Stovall says, I've had a very difficult season lately and I've fallen short and got too comfortable with spending time apart from God and then coming back. Mm. So I'm going to live by faith by spending time with him. That's so good. Thank you, Alexis. Sometimes when you're like going through difficulties, it's like you put your time with God lower thinking that's going to make your life better because you got to fix all this other stuff. Yeah. But I love that she said she's going to live by faith by spending time with him, like mm. trusting that he's going to take care that's of it. That's hard. Yeah. Brooke E.M. said, I need to submit my schedule to God. I have gotten to the point where I'm scheduling time with God because I'm so busy. Mm. I need to live less by the facts of what I need to do and more by faith. Not so Same. similar to yeah. the one before. I, like I love these. We're so encouraged by these and... Um, we just, we hope you are too. And we'll have a time at the end of this message as well mm -hmm. called after the amen, where you're also able to respond to this question and you'll hear a little bit of my response from the message as well. So stay tuned for that. Today, we are in Matthew chapter four, verses eight through 11, and I'll go ahead and start reading. Let's do it. Next, Satan took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him the nations of the world and all their glory. I'll give it all to you, he said, if you will only kneel and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. The scriptures say, worship only the Lord God, obey only him. Then Satan went away and angels came and cared for Jesus. Amen. All right. So the positivity of power the problem with power and the position of power. First of all, let's talk about the positivity of power. There's a positive side to power. It's not all bad, right? Just like regular electricity, there's a negative side, there's a positive side. Well, with the power that you're gonna experience, whatever power you may have, creative power, intelligent power, uh, I don't know, political power, economic power, financial power, whatever power you have, leadership power, there's a positive side to it. Verses eight and nine tell us one of two. There's two main positive sides of power, reservations and rest. Look at verses eight and nine. It says, next Satan took him to the peak of a very high mountain. Say that out loud, underline it. And showed him the nations of the world and all their glory. I'll give it all to you if you only kneel and worship. So what is he saying here? He's saying with great power comes great reservations. Jesus has all the power in the world. He's the son of God. He's also the word of God. Satan knows the word of God. Satan knows that the word of God in the Old Testament says that all these things belong to the son of God, all the nations, everything. So why is Satan fronting as if the nations belong to him? Well, he's not fully fronting. The devil never fully front, fronts. He fronts like a little bit. Because what he's saying here in verse 8 and 9 of Matthew 4 is that he can give the nations to Jesus if Jesus bows down and worships him. That's partly true. Satan has been given a little bit of limited power right now on earth, but he knows everything the nations rightly belong to God the Son. Because mm -hmm. God the Father has given them to the Son. But what he's saying here is, Jesus, you can do a shortcut. He, he knows that these nations are reserved for Jesus because with great power comes great reservations. He, 
it all belongs to him. But he's saying, Jesus, we know these are yours, but for right now, like I'm ruling over them. I'm the prince and power of the mm-hmm. air. First Corinthians 4.4. 4. And so instead of going through the cross and the suffering and the obedience to God, instead of doing it God the Father's way and his will, why don't you just shortcut it and worship me and I'll give it all to you. With great power comes great reservations. Jesus has so much power. All things are reserved for him. We see this when we go to a restaurant. You know, if you are Bruce Wayne and you walk into a restaurant and they say, well, we we don't have a reservation. We're never going to get in here. What does Bruce Wayne say? Oh, they should. I own the place. That's literally what he said in the movie. (laughs) I remember that verse Mm -hmm. or that part. Mm -hmm. And they bring out a table and put it in the middle of the room. And Mm -hmm. he sits down without a reservation because he has great power. Jesus has great power. Even Satan knows it. And what Satan wants, th- what Satan wants Jesus to do is to lay down that power in exchange for worship to him. This is what Satan wants from all of us. All of us have been given a certain amount of power. Again, creative power, economic power, intellect. There's all kinds of powers that God has bestowed upon you to use for his glory. What the devil wants us to do is to lay down that power in exchange for worship to him, and he'll give us the things that our flesh desires. We hear it all the time, there's selling your soul to the devil. Whether that's actually true or not, what's actually happening is people are using their power to bring themselves glory and to get what their flesh wants. Mm. But the positive side of it is power is so great. There's a reservation that comes with that. But there's also a rest that comes with it. Another positive side of power. The more power I hold, the more rest I have. If we truly had great power, we would experience great rest. You know, how do the rich vacation on private islands, in private jets? Doesn't it seem like they have so much rest? It's a worldly rest. It's a carnal rest. It's not a a spiritual rest. If not, if it was, they wouldn't be spending so much money trying to find that rest. But in a physical sense, maybe they, they are very rested, sleeping on a private jet, sleeping on a private island. The more power I hold, the more rest I have. Look at verse 11. It says, then Satan went away and the angels came and cared for Jesus. So here's Satan tempting Jesus. Jesus responds to the temptation with the word of God. He says, go away, Satan. Sometimes the only thing you need to say to Satan, to sin, to flesh, to temptation, is one word, go. You know what go means? Get. Go in Greek means get. It's what we say to a dog that's a stray and probably has rabies and is about to bite your child. Get, get. It's all you gotta say to a dog. Once it hears that one syllable, it's out of there. Satan is a very powerful, with a big bark and a big bite, evil dog, a demon dog. It's what he is. But he responds so well to one word, get, because he's prideful. He hates that. He hates it so much. What he wants most is to be worshipped. Just like a dog wants their belly rubbed and, oh, you're such a good boy. What dogs really want, honestly, is worship. They want you just to feed them and give them what they want and let them jump on the couch. And they want you to walk them. They just want worship. And Satan is no different. What Jesus says to him is get, and he leaves. With great power comes great rest. The more power I have and I hold, the more rest I have and I hold on to. Look at God the Father speaking the world into existence through the word of God, which we know in the flesh is Jesus. God in his great power, what does he do? He rests on the seventh day. Makes the whole world with his great power the whole universe, and then he rests. The more power I hold, the more rest I have. If we really truly had power and we knew how to wield it, oh, would we have such spiritual rest? So that's the positivity of power. Let's look at the problem of power in verse nine and 10. I'll give it all to you, Satan said, if you only kneel and worship me. So this is the problem with power. There's two problems with power, worship and work. Worship, why worship? Because I worship what is out of my control. The problem with power is it requires worship. The problem with power is it requires work. 
Let's talk about worship first. Look at verse 10. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus said, told him. The scriptures say, worship only the Lord God. Obey only him. Satan says, if, I want, if you want me to give over this temporary power that I have, I can give it to you if you worship me. Worship requires power. And then Jesus says, no, we, the, the scriptures say, worship only the Lord God and obey only him. Worship requires power. And ultimately, at the end of the day, the problem is we will worship what is out of my control. I worship what is out of my control. Things that I can't mm. control, I worship. Last week I was surfing. No, this week I was surfing with my friend and we were getting out of the water and we were going to take a shower to get the salt water off. And we we're both wearing wetsuit tops because it was really cold that day. And he goes, I'm going to take off my top uh, so I can you know, get all the salt water because it was trapped under the wetsuit. And he said, um, the way he said it was, I'm going to take my top off. And then he started like remembering the song by Gunna. I took the top off. I'm tripping like hot sauce. That old song that went super viral before he went to prison for a Rico case. And then the song went playing in my head. And we just started like reminiscing on the days when we used to listen to secular rap. Both of us were like jamming Christian rap all the way here. What Up RG, 1K View, uh, Paris Karras, all of our favorite artists in the Christian hip hop world. And we're jamming that on the way here. And then we get out of the water. And now we're having this conversation about like, man, God has brought us so far from just pleasing our flesh with these evil lyrics. It's crazy to think that your flesh desires lyrics that are evil. It wants to hear evil words, words that are anti-God. Our flesh desires that. And the problem with it is we worship that. Our flesh is, was so out of control before we met Christ. Our flesh, we were a slave to. Sin, we were a slave to. The enemy, the devil, was our true father in that moment because we were children of wrath, just like he is. And all those things, the flesh, the world, the devil, were out of our control. We couldn't get ourselves out of sin. And so what do we do? We listen to lyrics like Top Off by Gunna. Why? We worship what is out of our control. Things that are greater and bigger and stronger than us, we just give in to worshiping them. This is what the mm -hmm. people in Babylon did when Nebuchadnezzar erected this huge monument of worship to himself. What did they do? They bowed down. The, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. they didn't bow down because they're like, this king is not out of God's control. God is out of my control. So I'm mm -hmm. only going to bow to him. The word worship here in Greek, it means respect. And what it means is to hold a high amount of respect in your heart for something. That's what worship is. So in that moment, when we were reminiscing on these old lyrics that reminded me of what I used to worship, I was also reminded that now I worship God. I listen to lyrics that are honoring to him, that exalt him because he is the one that I truly cannot control. He's given me the power now through the Holy Spirit to control my flesh, to control my sin, to control my desires. But now I worship the only one that is out of my control. And that is God. Mm, he does so what he good. wants. So that's the problem with power, worship. It requires worship. But the, the second problem with power is work. Look at verse nine and 11. I'll give it all to you. If you only kneel and worship me, get out of here, Satan, Jesus said. The scriptures say, worship only the Lord God. Obey only him. Obey only him. Jesus says, Satan, I'm not working for you. I'm working for God. My one goal in life, my one job is to serve the Lord God. Not you, not anything else. But that presents a problem. Power requires work. Great work. Look at verse 11. Satan went away. The angels came and cared for Jesus. Who are the angels working for? Jesus. Jesus just went through 40 days and nights of fasting, no food, horrendous temptations by the devil. And after that, 40 days. Why 40? 40 was symbolic of a time of testing. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Testing, trial, suffering. The people of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 days or 40 years. Why? 
trial, testing, suffering. We talked a lot about in the last couple episodes how through testing, God perfects us. Jesus was perfect. And he went through the 40 days representing that time of trial that the, the world never got right, that the Israelites never got right. He got it right in those 40 days. In his 40, he was right. It's work obeying God. He just went through that. And then what happens? The angels come and they care for Jesus. I imagine they're cooking him some good food. I don't know what food made by angels tastes like, but it's probably amazing. They're caring for Jesus. Maybe even gave him a massage or something. They're taking care of him. They're refreshing him. They're serving him. Why? They work for God. They worship God. They submit to the power of God. The problem with power is it requires worship, but it requires work. Are you willing to work for God? Hmm. The most powerful being in the universe. Only a couple months after getting on TikTok, I uh, got to like maybe 500,000. I don't remember what the number was, but I got an email from TikTok. They're like, hey, we want you to come to LA for this TikTok thing. And I was like, sure, I've never been to anything like this. And so they flew me out. They gave me a hotel room, it was a nice hotel room. We were in LA, it was uh, celebrities showed up to it. It was a big thing. Your biggest TikTokers, all the ones that you know about, they were there. Um, and then at the last day of it, after, or one night Doja Cat came, it was a surprise. They kept saying, someone's, what's one celebrity you guys are gonna be so stoked on? There's lots of celebrities there, but they're like, this one, this, this one, just wait, just wait, just wait. So we're all like kind of looking over our shoulders, okay, who's it gonna be? And this is when, um, why don't you say? So that song was like really big. And so everyone was all excited when she showed up that she did a little private concert for us. And it was open bar, everyone was drinking all night. And me and my friend, uh, went back to our, he's a Christian. Me and him went back to the room. We were like, okay, it's enough of this nonsense. And then we went to sleep and I woke up the next morning just feeling the darkness of my career because I was realizing like, okay, I'm officially an influencer. I'm officially like gonna be able to do this work from home, which is what we prayed for. I did this by God's grace, making Christian, Christian videos. But I, so I was just feeling the darkness felt so alone. Everyone there was for an opposite reason than me and my friend. And then he called me. He's like, hey, you got to come down. It was like eight o'clock or nine o'clock or something. You got to come down and check this out. I was like, no, I'm good, man. I'm just going to like pack up, get ready for my flight. No, man, come on. You got to come down. It's going to be, it's sick. Just come check it out. I was like, okay, fine. I get down there and they're singing like, you know, gospel music in the lobby and they're playing piano and it's like, everyone's going crazy. And they're kind of having like a faux church service. <laughs> and I made a video that did really good. It was called TikTok Church. And I talked about, you know, you know, we're having, we're having TikTok church and filmed a bunch of the creators that were there. And I remember seeing some of their eyes, seeing some of their faces, because they all know me as the Christian guy, right? And I'm filming them and like their eyes would just get so big, but with not big, like, oh, I'm excited. I'm in a video, which some of them are. Everyone's excited to be in a video when you're a TikToker, but it was more of like a shame, like, oh, you caught me um, being hypocritical. And so I just remember the shame that, that I could see in their eyes. And I remember thinking, I become a working slave to the power that I pursue. Whatever power I'm pursuing, we, I become a slave to that. It becomes the thing that I worship the most, that I'm willing to do anything for. And I, this was ultimately the reason why I deleted my TikTok, deleted my Instagram, not, be, not to be some deep theological look at me, I'm so better than all these other people on TikTok, I was really, truly, if you could see more than what you guys see through the videos, if you were following me around all day, every day, you would see a working slave to the power that I was pursuing, not God. I was not pursuing God. Oh, Alex, your Christian videos really helped me out of this time in life. I'm so, I'm so happy that God was able to use the racks the filthy rags to save and to help. But I was doing it because I was pursuing power and I had lost, I was losing myself. That's the problem with power. So how do we put ourselves in the position to use power the way God wants us to use it? What is the position of power? Let's check that out. Verse 11, Satan went away, the angels, came and cared for Jesus. 
How powerful, how great do you have to be for angels to come to your bedside and take care of you? Jesus was so humble. So if we position ourselves humbly, our power will grow incredibly. There's no one more humble than Christ. The greatest of all, Jesus says, must be the servant of all, Matthew 23, 11. And James 4, 6, James had been with Jesus longer than Matthew had been with Jesus. So when Jesus, when Matthew wrote down those words, greatest of all, must be the servant of all, he heard Jesus say that, and then he wrote it down. James saw Jesus live it. James was Jesus's half brother, younger brother. So in James 4, 6, when he says that God opposes the proud and then exalts the humble, He saw his brother live that out. James's brother, at the time of writing this, not before, but at the time of writing this, James's brother was his hero. Mm. Jesus was James's hero. Growing up, he didn't really believe in Jesus. You know, Jesus was perfect. And so he was always in the shadow of Jesus. I imagined it in some way. Today at the beach, uh, Lokelani is very pregnant, very, very pregnant. And just this last week, the baby even popped out even more. So she was hiding it most of this time during pregnancy. But now people are like, oh, this girl's very pregnant. And she was sitting in this chair. We had two chairs at the beach. And at some point, she gets out of her chair and lets the kids sit in her chair. And I was thinking, like, what are you doing? This is, you have the power to command any chair on this island because you are very pregnant and you have, a, you have four kids already. If you want a throne, you deserve a throne. <laughs> you have that power. And no one's going to, everyone's going to give up a chair for a pregnant woman, especially when she has four kids already. Um, And as sweet and as humble as you are, Lokelani. But um, she gives up that power to let someone else sit down. And as I see her like sitting on the ground, I'm like, you know, do you want my chair? Do you want this one? And she said, no. I'm like, why are you so willing to sit on the ground where it seems to be uncomfortable? It's just humility. It's humility. But even even in that case, I was learning that most cultures um, in the East, Japanese cultures, Korean cultures, they sit almost like almost 100 percent of the time they sit on the ground. They'll use the the couch as a backrest. Interesting. They are so uh, used to just bringing themselves low that it's just become a more comfortable way of life for them. It's a natural thing. They buy a couch. They don't even use it. They buy chairs, they sit on the ground and eat. They're just so used to bringing themselves low. That's the kind of Christian I want to be. Mm. Because that's where true power is, Jesus says. And not to mention, you know, Lokalani's posture is better than mine. She is able to like sit comfortably on the ground, crisscross applesauce with great posture. You guys see how she sits in the podcast. She sits crisscross most of the time. And so there's a greater power that you have when you bring yourself low. I wouldn't be able to push out four or five kids. She does it always within like 90 minutes. You know, when we get to the hospital, it's like an hour and a half later, maybe two. I don't think it ever went to two hours. Her pregnancies have just been so good. Thank God. But it's just this habits of just bringing herself low, stretching, all these different things that she does, putting others first, always up in the middle of the night, walking around the house, filling up milk, filling it up, you know, taking it to Lucy. She's crying. It's 3 a.m. This power that comes from bringing yourself low. Position yourself humbly and your power will grow incredibly. Mm. Philippians 2, Jesus gave up his power so we could rest in God's power. The position of power shows us the true positivity of power, but it also fixes the problem with power. And that is our pride. If we look to Jesus... And how he brought himself low, how he served, how he is the greatest of all, because he is the servant of all. How because of his humility, God exalted him and opposed the proud one, Satan. And we are the proud ones too. God was opposing us. We were enemies. While we were enemies of God, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. We look to him and how he did it. Even when it's hard, even when we don't want to give up our power. 
If we looked at how he gave up his power so we could rest in God's power. The real rest comes from knowing this. I don't have to use my power to get what I want. I can give up my power. I just got to make some more money. I just got to get these people to listen to me. I got to get my kids in straight. I got to get more views. I got to get more success. You'll never be happy with that. You'll never have rest. You'll never have peace in your spirit. Mm -hmm. The moment we realize that Jesus gave up his power so we could rest in God's power, mm -hmm. the working stops, the ceasing stops. Mm -hmm. We can say, oh, wait, I don't have to kill myself mentally, emotionally, physically. I can give this up. And the more you give up your power, the more you position yourself humbly, the more your power will truly grow. Because the more you're relying on the Holy Spirit's power, you mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit are already one, the more in your will, you're becoming one with him. Mm. His power is becoming your power. You're becoming one with him. You're, be you're being made more perfect because your decisions and what God wants you to do are becoming one. So good. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Jesus' example. Mm -hmm. Thank you for how you exalted him. He's sitting on the right hand of you right now, Father. And we, we will be sitting with him as co-heirs, you promise, when we learn to continue to give up our power and surrender to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is a part of the episode called after the amen, where we ask you a question to help you apply this message to your life. So our question for you today is what power do you need to give up? What power do you need to give up today? I love this. And I love how, you know, Alex used Jesus's example and how that's what we have to look for. And I think that um, in our culture, like knowledge is power and, um, yeah, we have Google, we have experts, we have mm -hmm. so much information and so much knowledge at our hands that I can like, and it, this kind of goes into last week's message as well. Like mm -hmm. I can trust the facts or trust the knowledge or, you know, like, oh, we're bringing in a fifth child, our car seats, you know, what is it? it? Our car seat seven, you know, we're at max capacity, but it's a little tight. Like mm -hmm. the back bench, I don't know how all four <laughs> boys are going to fit, you know, like that's where my mind can start to go. You know, like I'm in the officially in the nesting stage <laughs> of pregnancy. So it's like gathering all his clothes and then like thinking about the future, like thinking, oh, okay, what, how are we going to do like a nursery or is he just going to stay in our room for like a year? Like, you know, mm -hmm. trying to think of all the facts like last week or using knowledge as power so that mm -hmm. I can slip into sin, which is like worry or trusting in myself or trusting in the world or the facts instead of humbly trusting the Lord by living by faith. And I think that that's what I need to give up is knowledge. And what's cool is like, we can, we have the opportunity you know, when we're in these like little cycles to remember what Jesus has done already, mm -hmm. what Christ has done first and foremost on the cross, but mm -hmm. um, just in our individual lives, you know, like we've been in this situation plenty of times with yeah. homes and cars and the Lord has always given us what we needed. And it's always like blown our mind and it's always been good, but you know, how tricky the enemy really could be like, okay, like, are you like, do you really think that's wise to have a fifth child? You know, I'm obviously yeah. we're, we're not thinking about it. We're having a fifth child, but you know, like you should really stop now. Like you should, that's too much. The finances, the house, the car, this, that, like, those are the facts of life that the world pushes. Mm -hmm. um, but trusting and living by faith and trusting Jesus, how much freedom you truly get, which to the world, that's not going to make sense because yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem like freedom. Mm -hmm. But how much freedom to just like let go of all the world's little notions and ways and to just know like we're honoring the Lord yep. by doing this and he's going to take care of it. And yeah. he has done that in our lives. And I know that he will do that in yours if you humbly submit to him, as you were saying, mm -hmm. and um, just allow him to do to provide yeah and allow him to 
do the work. And I, so I just love that, that Jesus gave up his power so we could rest in God's power. Mm. And that's, I feel like what rest is when it's like, I don't have the answers. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you will. <laughs> that's true rest. So yeah, I think that's where I'm at. And we'd love to hear your answer to this question and you'll also get an opportunity to maybe be featured in next week's episode. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, we love you guys. Thank you for that. Thank you for wrapping that up. I love your responses and how they just apply to your everyday life and what you're going through right now. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what we love about your responses too. Mm -hmm. And with that said, um, you guys have so much power over this podcast because you keep it going through your support. And so um, the true power from this podcast is from you. Over like 112 countries we've been listened in. We just got some analytics back this week from Spotify. Um, so that's Spotify alone, not to mention YouTube and Google Podcasts and Apple and stuff. And so mm -hmm. because the power that you guys hold and supporting and giving to this podcast, we're able to reach so many people. Lots to do in Matthew. To finish out this book, we're going to be having lots of episodes in Matthew. Yeah. Uh, but it's been so good so far. So thank you guys. Amenpodcast.com. If you want to give, amenpodcast.com. We love you and we'll see you in the next one. Yes. And until then, go out and be the church. Amen. <laughs>